Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how I use my M2 MacBook Pro for content creation, what settings I make and the apps that I use. I've been using a Mac since 2020 and I'm getting more and more involved in the Apple ecosystem every day. I think Mac designs and interfaces are much, much better than Windows and from what I have experienced, I can be much more productive when I work on a Mac. I only use my Windows to play video games now. For everything else, I use my MacBook and I'm very happy with it. By the way, the MacBook M2 Pro version is the one that I use. I prefer the version with 32GB of RAM because I also do video editing. So let's start with the settings I changed on my Mac. First, I clean the dock. Remove all the programs I don't use often from there. Leave only the ones I use and make it a little smaller. It's so big, there is no need for it. What did he say? Also, when you minimize applications, they usually take up a separate space. I don't like that either, so I'm turning the setting off from here. Now, when I minimize, the application shrinks into the icon. They don't take up a separate space. And finally, I'm turning this setting off. Secondly, I'm removing the tabs I don't use in the sidebar from the finer settings. Minimalism, bro. Everything that I don't use, goes away. In addition, I add the folders that I use frequently. For example, the YouTube folder. This folder contains the b-rolls, music, sound effects, video effects, backgrounds, everything that I use to make my videos. While we're in Finder, let's also go to the view settings, turn on the show path bar and show status bar. The path bar is for seeing the exact location of the file and the status bar is for seeing the size of the folder that I'm currently in. Another setting that I definitely change is what app opens the audio and music files. Normally, when you open a music or audio file, it opens with Apple Music. I don't want this, so I right click on an audio file and say get info and select QuickTime player from the open with section and say change all. It's better this way. Finally, there is the menu bar section. The settings I changed there are, I want to see the battery percentage, so I turn that on from the control center settings and I close everything in the menu bar only section at the bottom. I had been using Chrome on the Windows side as a browser for many years that I had tried Brave a little bit with a friend's recommendation. When I switched to Mac, I was going back and forth between Safari and Chrome, but then I discovered Arc from a fellow creator, Max Ruiz Singer, I hope I pronounced it right, and decided to give it a try. It has a different interface compared to other browsers and I think its design is very nice. Of of course, the browser is a matter of taste, apart from security aspect, so everyone can prefer a different browser. I prefer the Arc, and the biggest reason for that is its design. While the tabs are on the top in many browsers, they are on the left in Arc. Now, it has many features, I can't mention all of them right now, but another nice feature is that if I hold down the Shift key and click on any link, a small preview page like this opens on the screen, and I can look at the link directly and close it and continue where I left off on the other page. Or if I want to work on two tabs at the same time, I can bring one tab next to the other and see both of them on the screen directly as split screens. I think Arc is a pretty good browser. Now let's come to the video editing app, the most important app on my Mac. I have been using Adobe Premiere Pro as a video editing software for many, many years. It is probably the app that has been open the longest on my computer. By the way, if any of you has used both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, I would be very happy if you could write which one you use at the moment and why. I always used Premiere Pro but like DaVinci Resolve also seems cool but I don't know if it's worth like switching there because like, I have to start all over again learning the DaVinci Resolve and I'm already good at Premiere Pro. So let me know in the comments. Thank you. If you have been following my content for a while, you know how much I love video editing. Unlike many creators, I love video editing. I enjoy that part of the process as well. I mean, I'm also a video editor. Like, I don't know, video editing is special to me. When I edit videos or when I create videos in general, I can bring out my inner creative personality. I'm completely in control what will be created, how will it be created, which colors will be used, which emotions will be emphasized, what kind of story will be told, what purpose will it serve. I just love the creativity flowing through me. Another indispensable program for me is Adobe Photoshop. The program I have been using for years to create video thumbnails or the visuals and designs I use in videos is Adobe Photoshop. Even 8 years ago, at the age of 12, I was making Adobe Adobe Photoshop tutorials on YouTube, or rather how-to videos. Wow, time flies by. I was also interested in freelance graphic design works at the time, making logos, designs for Twitch streamers, YouTube banners, YouTube thumbnails, and if I remember correctly, I think I have learned Photoshop before I did Premiere Pro. But then when I learned about video editing, that's when I said like, that's what I like, that's what I want to do, video editing and creating videos. Another program that makes my job so much easier is Raycast. Raycast basically offers more features than Spotlight on Mac. I've been using Raycast so long that 
I don't remember which feature Spotlight offers on its own. <laughs> However, I usually use Raycast to access files directly while editing videos. I write the name of the file and drag and drop it in the video editing software. Of course, it has many other features. I can open it directly with command and space and do a math calculation. I can quickly position apps to different positions on the screen, etc. It also has features such as translation and AI, but they are in the paid plan and I honestly wondered if it was worth the money and I do my work directly from the browser. So I use the free version. Another one of the most important apps on my Mac is Notion. Notion is the app that never closes on my Mac. In fact, it's open right now. Like I have my notes there. I organize both my life and my work with Notion. Daily and weekly plans, content planning, income and expense tracking, notes, project management. In short, I take notes and plan everything here. I left the link in the description for those who want my template, by the way. You can check it out. I swear Notion is an app that really makes my life easier. When there is no plan, there is no time management. And if you're someone like me who does a lot of things, you need time management. Otherwise, you go crazy. I'm someone who likes to make plans in my daily life. So when I look at Notion that day, I need to know what I have to do that day. And it is more or less clear in my mind which task should be done in the morning or afternoon because I'm more productive in the morning. For me, the days I work needs to be planned. It is okay if the days I don't work and take the day for myself that are not planned. That's okay. But the days that I work needs to be planned. If I need to show my screen in my videos, I use OBS Studio to record my screen. There are probably other software as well, but I think OBS is one of the best and it's free. It helps you record videos and use you can also live stream if you want. It's the app that many streamers use. I think it is also the best program for video recording. I've been using OBS for years and I recommend it to everyone who needs it. It offers a lot of features and it is more than enough. In addition to screen recording, when we shoot videos, we also need to record audio. I use Audacity for this, when I'm not recording directly from the camera with a label microphone. Other than that, Audacity meets all my needs, which is also free by the way. It actually has many effects and settings, but I usually use a noise reduction or something like that after recording the audio. And if I need to make some extra settings, I make them in Premiere Pro when editing the video. However, if any of you wants to record audio but cannot find a decent software, I definitely recommend Audacity. Apart from that, I also know Adobe Audition, but it is a paid app. You need an Adobe membership. I mean, if you already have an Adobe membership, yeah, you can use it. Another app that I use is Slack. I don't use it in content creation. It doesn't do much in that area, but I use it for video editing. I use this app to communicate with clients. When there is a video, we talk about the details there for file links and etc. I think it is a good app for communication. Of course, it is not an app that has many advantages for me in terms of content creation, but I wanted to add it to the list. And thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it and see you in the next one. Bye.